Hi, I'm Pete Duncanson, Media Arts Pastor, and I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for being here. If you are physically here with us today, please be aware that for your safety, we are practicing social distancing and ask you to respect those that are using precautions as well. If you'd like to know more about what is going on right here at Central, whether upcoming events or just learning about who we are, check us out on the web, Facebook, and yes, we even have an app for that. If the ministry at Central has blessed you and you would like to give, you can do that multiple ways. By using the physical boxes located in the back by the sound booth, through online giving, or even through our app. Thanks again for joining us today, and God bless. Turn your Bibles today to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Brother Dave Hill texted me earlier this morning and said he was on his way, or maybe late last night, he was on his way to uh, speak at uh, Pastor Rob's churches. He leads two Methodist churches here, one in town and one out out the road. And uh, Brother Dave Hill was going to be there singing and preaching. And um, <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> that will be a good morning. Amen. He... Uh, Excuse me, I told him the other day, Brother Dave, come on, we're waiting on you to do that here at Central. <clears throat> he, uh, he said his band has kind of come back together. Their sax player, Brother Eddie, passed away late last year, early this year, and um, they've found a young, young guy that's playing sax for him, and he's very happy about that band. They'll be here sometime this summer. Daniel chapter 7. <clears throat> and um, wait for me to get there, Okay. <laughs> For some reason, it's not opening very well in my Bible today. Well, I keep going back past it and then forward past it. Anybody else having that problem? Who has thumb tabs in their Bible? Hmm. Cheater. Look at verse 23. <laughs> then he said to me, This fourth beast is the fourth world power that will rule the earth. It will be different from all the others. It will devour the whole world, trampling and crushing everything in its path. Now, if you know the, um, <clears throat> the picture of that last world empire in one of the other visions is clay and, and iron. I was thinking this week as I was praying and walking one day, um, where does silicone come from? Does it come out of the ground like from clay? I think it's interesting that that's always been interpreted. Somebody a thousand years ago interpreted that as the Roman Empire, and now we use the term renewed or revised Roman Empire. And I'm not sure that that's what the Lord's saying to us. He might be talking about technology. Because the phone in your hand or pocket, hopefully, turned off, or at least put on you know, silent, or the watch on your arm, it's a mixture of iron and clay. I just threw that out there for you. I'll let you... Yeah, I'm too late. Now I won't even get you back for the rest of the message. Pastor, I watched this video and you wouldn't believe in... <clears throat> now look at uh, verse 24. Uh, we'll finish. Yeah, ten, 24. It's ten horns or ten kings who will rule that empire. Then another king will arise, different from the other ten, who will subdue three of them. He will defy the Most High and oppress the holy people of the Most High. And that's where the King James says, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He will try to change their sacred festivals and laws, and they will be placed under his control for a time, times, and half a time. Because we are fallen men and women in our unsaved condition, but also because that... <clears throat> There resides within us the, um, the residue of all of that. Somehow we gravitate towards him. We're intimidated by the thought of this empire and this king. We're overwhelmed by the intensity described here. He's going to oppress. The Greek says oppression, but, but it really is by uh, the oppression is so intense it wears down the people of God. Now... <clears throat> Theologically, I take out of this because it's mentioned over and over that these are the saints 
and it's in the Old Testament, and these are the holy people of God, uh, God's holy people. Those are all, to me, Israeli descriptions, all right? So Jewish emphasis here. But I don't want to talk about the end times today. That, that's not what I want to focus on. Because what happens is you read this and you read it through the lens of prophecy. And then you read it through what you've been taught or what you've heard or what you've seen. And, and you miss some of what God is saying. We're, we get in trouble if outside of a worship service we limit our understanding of his word to what we were taught in a worship service. That's why I often say to you, for the, for the sake of today's message, because I don't want it to be limited. You could read that very text an hour later in the Holy Spirit so you show you something else. Amen? So the text is always fresh. It's always speaking to us because this is the living word of God. But I do want to focus on this today and just ask you, do you feel totally worn out? You know, that's kind of discouraging when the Bible says, listen, you serve the king of kings, but there's a guy coming. He won't be living forever. He's not eternal. He's not holy. He didn't rise up from the dead. But he's going to wear out the people of God. It kind of makes you why we signed up, doesn't it? It kind of makes you wonder why we signed up. Like, what did we get into here? And we kind of live that way sometimes. Oh, I serve God. But the world really dominates me. But you have to see what God wrapped around this. You have to see what he's imparting to us, even just in this chapter, and what Daniel was really hearing, so that you realize God is allowing you to choose. Will you be impacted by the description of this guy and what he does here on earth, or will you be impacted by what God describes is available to us? This is uh, scary stuff, there's no doubt. And it's been dis dissected over and over, and assigned. Maybe because it's so scary, we assign it. That's the end times. And we always believe the end times are sometime tomorrow afternoon, but not today. <laughs> We're almost there. They're coming. I've been, I've been in this for a long time, and, and I've been on the side of believing we're, we're right there on the edge. But it's funny. I've never woke up on a day and said, well, this is it. This is, it. This is the end times. <laughs> we have that hope in us that, oh, it's going to be bad for our kids or our grandkids, but it's okay for us. And if we do that, we can miss things that are right here. Now, notice at the end of this, he will try to change their sacred festivals and laws. Now, if you understand the book of 1 John, John tells us that the spirit of Antichrist is here already. So if, if this describes the end times Antichrist, then his spirit and what he's intending to do has already been poured out on us, so to speak, or released. And if you think about it, isn't it interesting that all over the world, laws that were common sense are now being changed? I mean, it's phenomenal. I read this morning, this morning. Let me, let me make sure I know which nation. I think it's in Sweden, and it's the Lutheran Church in Sweden. It's the largest representation of the Lutheran Church, I believe, is the nation of Sweden. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Please don't Google it right now. Or if you do, don't let me see you doing it. And uh, <laughs> they have just announced that they are, uh, in their clergy, trans-inclusive. Now, I didn't take time to read what that means because I really honestly don't fully know. But it looked like some of the common sense laws just got turned. So as far as I understand it, and I'm, I don't really need to understand it, don't really want to, don't even care. I just don't. But this is people who don't know whether they were assigned. This is the big terminology now. Whether they were assigned the gender of male or female. Assigned. I thought, it was a, I thought the evolution was the god of, of science. And I thought you could do scientific testing and just prove everything. I thought science could prove everything. And yet, you, you, <laughs> like I know a lot of people who grew up on farms. They can even tell you whether a chicken is a boy or a girl. I 
chicken. All right, we're going to get somewhere we don't need to be. <laughs> Except to tell you that the spirit of Antichrist is already here because lots of spiritual, sacred festivals and religious-based laws are being changed or trying to be changed and everything is going to be placed under this guy's hand so if you feel totally worn out like i do and maybe you don't i don't care i'm here to preach to me today so <laughs> if you feel worn out join with me what do we do how how do we people of faith people of god people who are not supposed to feel totally worn out how do we not feel that way well i'm glad you asked about that or i'm glad i asked about it. look at verse 15 we're going to stay in chapter 7 because everything we need is right here i daniel was troubled by all i had seen and my visions terrified me so i approached one of those standing beside the throne and asked him what it all meant he explained it to me like this these four huge beasts represent four kingdoms that will arise from the earth but in the end the holy people of the Most High will be given the kingdom and they will rule forever and ever. Before Daniel even sees the problem, he sees the solution. Amen? Before he hears about how bad it's going to be here, he's being told about how good it is over there. Glory to God. Number one today, in the end, we receive the kingdom. Praise God. Listen, this text is all you need from Bible prophecy. That's it. Everything is right there. That's all you need to know. You don't even need to go down to the part about this last guy, the ten horns, and he comes in, and he takes three of them and throws them in the, in the trash and says, hey, I'm, I'm the big dude now. I'm the big cheese. You don't need to know any of that. All you need to know is in the end, verse 18, in the end, the holy people of the Most High will be given the kingdom, and they will rule forever and ever in the end we get it all hallelujah keep your lottery keep it all everything you get at rocky gap hang on to it praise god i don't need it <laughs> sure all of this speaks to the jewish person but it speaks to us too Amen? That's why it's so important to understand what Paul was telling us in Romans about us being grafted in. In chapters 9 and 10 and 11, you get that great introduction to Jewish history, and then you get an explanation as well as to Christian history that had really just started a couple of years before. And those two, how they were merging, how one not only informed the other, but how, the, how it brought forth. And what we benefited from that Jewish history and all of those covenants and promises. And out of all of that, Paul says, and you were grafted in too. But you got to pay attention. Sober up and pay attention. Because just like God grafted you in, you were a wild branch. He can cut you back out. He's cut the, the Israelis out, and he's going to graft them back in. He can cut you out. Tough warning. But he says all of that to remind us that what we find in the Old Testament of the promises of God to his covenant people, those promises are to us too. And that's an encouragement. When you feel totally worn out, just remember that the kingdom belongs to you. And, and you might say, well, I don't know what I get and what good does that do me right now. It's, you know, it does a lot of good for us right now. Emotionally, it sustains us. But experientially, it reminds us that we are not of this world. We're not trying to inherit this world. We're not trying to improve this world. Because we're here and because we worship God, the world is improved because of us. But that's not our goal. Our goal is to worship Him, to serve Him, to live with Him forever. And you and I can walk in those promises and not worry about what's happening in the world around us. This is why I... <clears throat> recoil a little bit when any nation, including ours, goes through a phase where we become convinced that if we can just capture the power of this world, we can change it. If we have the Supreme Court, the White House, Congress, the Senate, if we have the State House, the Governor's House, Listen, you can have the outhouse for all I care. You're not, 
you're not going to win. Listen, the, the prince of the power of the air has so much more at his disposal in this world. And the moment you've got your guy or your gal in that lofty position, he's already there waiting, getting ready to offer them all the money in the world, all the power and position. He will corrupt them and compromise them. You and I have seen it 10,000 times. Should Jesus tarry, we'll see it 10,000 more. Our focus is not on this world. But pastor, you just don't understand how the Marxists have invaded. You don't understand what's, what's happening in the, among the wealthy. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Let me tell you something. The problem is not what's here in America. The problem is what's not here anymore. The church has lost her place. And when the church isn't preaching the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, you can forget it. I don't care what's happening out there. It's happening in our houses as well. It's not the presence of all that garbage. It's the absence of the blood-bought church. That's our problem. Amen? It does, that, you don't waste your time. But pastor, we have to vote. Vote. Hallelujah. Run for office. Praise God. Run for office. But you better be ready because that corrupting influence is going to be there no matter whether anybody talks to you or not. I'm telling you what, what the power of darkness will do the moment you step into that office. But do it anyways. Go. Do battles. Pastor Pam sang, this is how I fight my battles. You don't fight it by legislation. It doesn't work. I found an article this week, and I would looked for it this morning and couldn't find it, but how the church flourishes. And then I found others that wrote and said this isn't the, it, it's not true, but the church flourishes where it faces restriction. You look at Europe, because right now there's a season. It's, it's here in America, too, where... They're trying to tear down the history of the church as fast as possible. And then you tell me how strong the church is there, how strong the believers are. But go with me. Now, I haven't been. Dr. Paul I was telling us on our trip, there's only one true church on the earth that is absolutely <laughs> without any compromise, and that's the church in North Korea. Because if they find out you're in the church, you die. There's no, there's nothing about anything. And he said the second closest to that are parts of some of the other countries like China. And I read today where of the top three, Pakistan was one of the top three where the church is most persecuted. And they are persecuted. But they're also powerful. And I read an article, too, that said, yes, but if the church has freedom, it can also flourish. And that's true, but human nature being what it is, we, uh, we tend to struggle with that. Number one, in the end, we receive the kingdom. We're worn down now, but the Lord is with us. Amen. Look at verse 21 now. Here's the second thing, verse 21. As I watched, this horn was waging war against God's holy people and was defeating them. Great God in heaven, what's going on here? I don't like that at all. Until the Ancient One, the Most High, came and judged in favor of His holy people. Then the time arrived for the holy people to take over the kingdom. Glory to God. I'm not trying to take over America. I'm trying to take over the kingdom. Praise God. Number one today, you and I are... Worn down, but in the end, we receive the kingdom. Number two, we are worn down, but in the end, we win the case. Hallelujah. We're in court right now. This isn't talking about you can't do anything in this world or your life's going to be miserable and, and, and you're just going to be the wretched of the earth. That's, it's talking about the legal aspect. And the enemy is prevailing legally right now. Now, I know all the people out there that have figured out how to prevail over the enemy, and they can, they can tell the devil to get in his place, and they're victorious over I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing you have the devil can't take if God gives him permission. Don't ever forget that. And the moment your pride positions you otherwise, you can kiss everything you've got goodbye. Because God is not interested in you competing for his throne. Amen? He doesn't do well with pride. And he will make sure that his sons and daughters live humbly. What is it that your God requires? What did the prophets say? 
Yeah. And, and a broken and contrite spirit you will not reject. Pride goes before a fall is the way we've condensed that proverb. Pastor, you're making it sound like the devil wins. No, what I'm telling you is right now he's prevailing. In the court that convenes to direct the affairs of this life, you, I think you would agree with me. I don't think there's any doubt. It's not just that we have more news media today. It's not just that the news is 24-7, or at least the fabrication of news is 24-7, and that there are telephone or cell phones everywhere on the planet, and we can instantly send information here, there, and everywhere. What it is, even more than that, is that Satan is prevailing. It's not any surprise that in this last day and time, he's prevailing. But let's look again closely. As I watched, this horn was waging war and was defeating the people of God. And you can read in chapter 11 and, 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 and throughout the late part of chapter 11 how arrogant he is. So arrogant against humans in general and God in particular. Paul says he's so exalted, he will even walk into the temple and say, get everything out of here. The living God has just entered and I am he. But I love this. Daniel says, I watched. He's waging war until, praise God, until the ancient one, the most high, came and judged in favor of his holy people. This is him as judge. This is him coming into the courtroom. This is him saying, listen, I know you're here to prosecute. I know you're advocating against these people of mine. I know that you're here to sentence them. I know that you're here then to carry out that sentence. You're everything. You, you've been trying to, to tempt them, deceive them, entangle them, and ensnare them. And then once you get them there, you're trying to make them sick, diseased, afflicted, depressed, demoralized, and totally destroyed but I've got news for you the judge has just entered the courtroom amen and I am here to judge on behalf of my people you and I might feel worn down but we have already won the case glory to God we've got the king of kings presiding over our case and he's with us today and always the time of his full favor upon us is not yet that's the difficulty the time of his full favor upon us. We have some of his favor. We have bits and pieces of his favor. Glory to God. Sometimes that favor is a tabernacle over us and we just walk in it, praise God. There's other times we see kind of little holes in the tabernacle and the rain starts coming in. Other times we kind of feel like we can't find the tabernacle of his favor and we're just out in the elements all by ourselves. But I'm here today to remind you and I that in the end, we win the case. We're worn down now, but the trial is almost over. Glory to God. You and I are worn down. We feel defeated. We feel like he's always accusing us and always mocking us. And the devil's always dragging us in to different situations that we didn't even realize what they were. And then out of that, we feel totally condemned. And out of the situation, he drags us right into court and says to God, Huh. Job, Job would have never fallen apart like this one, but look at this. It, this one collapsed on day one. He, he, didn't even, he didn't make it through the loss of all of his property and livestock, and death of his kids. All I had to do was just blow a tiny little puff of, of difficulty on him, and this one just collapsed. Doesn't have any faith. Look, look at this, God. This is, this is one of your worst ones. And you're in the courtroom saying, it's true, it's all true. Oh, I failed, I failed. I don't even want to go to church anymore. I'm just such a failure. And what you need to be reminded of is the ancient one hasn't even arrived yet. And in this picture, in this dream, in this vision, the imagery that Daniel's giving us is so that we understand that the return, they had not even seen the Messiah the first time. 
And Daniel is projecting into our spirit the second coming, the king of glory. And he says, you need to understand something, people of the most high God. When he appears, he's not just coming back to help you or to strengthen you. He's not coming back to die in your place and to make sure that you know that God loves you. He's coming back as judge. He will be the executioner. No longer will Satan rule the earth. As a matter of fact, he'll be chained for a thousand years. What you need to understand is when he comes to the courtroom all of God's people stand up and say here comes the judge hallelujah here he comes and I'm on his side you may feel worn down today but the case is already declared victorious on your behalf praise God in the end we win the case we're worn down but the trial glory to God when you see the things happening around that you and I see I just want to remind you is is there any value to talking about what's happening in the world is there any value to studying bible prophecy absolutely as long as you remember this just this it's reminding us that the time is short amen i was visiting somebody last night and i told sister pam mm, this one's close to the kingdom and i'm this one i'm gonna get within the next week or two i'm bringing this one into the kingdom Now, Pastor, you can't say that. You act like it's all up to you and all. No, no, no. I'm just telling you what I sense and discern. I'm telling you I'm going to introduce him to Jesus Christ. He's going to do everything else. But he's the one that told me to fish. He's the one that told me if I follow him, he'll make me a fisher of men. So forgive me if I'm talking about fish. You can talk about changing your whole denomination to going after certain things, certain people without any transformation. Listen. Trans should mean transformation. Sinner to saint. World to kingdom. Minded of this life to minded of that life. It doesn't matter what your hang-up is, what your shortcoming is, what it is that you struggle with. All of us are sinners. All of us have to come in through grace. All of us have to believe that Jesus not only loves us, but doesn't leave us in the mess that is this life. What kind of Savior would that be? If he said, well, you can have heaven, but you've got to live like hell here on earth. What good is that? I don't want to confirm people in their condemnation. I want to offer them conviction and restoration. Amen? It's, listen, the same God that welcomed me reached into the gutter and said, It's okay. I don't care how dirty you are. I don't care how filthy you are. I don't care how reprobate, rebellious. I don't care about any of that. I love you, and I'll bring you out of that. That's the and. 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 All right, here's the third thing. Let's get, let's get this thing wrapped up today. Pastor, it's early. Why are you so almost done? Because I'm worn out. <laughs> Thank God. Chaplain Paul bailed me out this week and just ministering to families. Listen, you, um, a- anybody here on our team, when you want them to do something for you, your grandkids' wedding or your great-grandma's funeral, you don't... You don't offend me by saying, hey, can Pastor so-and-so do it, or can Chaplain Paul help? Or not? Hallelujah. So Thursday, we um, hosted the service here. We, we were not a part of it because the young lady that um, the funeral was here on Thursday, she was of uh, she was involved in the Baptist church and Baptist denomination. Thank God for the Baptist. Amen. She loved Jesus, loved him with all her heart, had many relatives who were in the ministry. They, uh, they came in and just did a, a beautiful service for her. There were hundreds and hundreds of people in here. Visitation started at 11, and the service was at 2, at 11 o'clock. Chaplain Paul did the funeral for Sister Lois Gordon, and I went down to that just a, a It's a beautiful home going from our perspective. And I say that meaning this, time. We we say we're we're here to celebrate the home going. But the home going took place, you know, prior. They they don't wait around and say, well, once you you close the casket and say amen, then I'm going to go into glory, right? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, hallelujah, right? 
So there was that service and then the luncheon. And those of you who were here for the uh, bereavement luncheon and you had to kind of scramble to find a parking place, I'm sorry, but we, we really felt honored to make our facility available for all of those young ladies in Wills Mountain Cloggers and her classmates out at Calvary. And it was just a, a very humbling thing to watch all of that. I, uh, Sister Pam asked me if I came down. I didn't. I have enough of those images in my mind. I've done enough funerals for kids. I didn't need another one because once those are there, they don't go away. And, um, but I was back in the back and just prayed for the family. Went down there and was back with the uh, luncheon and then it at 7 that night, Sister Pam and I did the funeral for Brother, Brother, Brother Kenny Hardman. And um, the visitation had been 4 to 7. So I'm thinking by 7 o'clock, we're going to have 12 or 15 people there. The whole room down at the Adams Funeral Home was full. The second room was half full. People were sitting so far back, I couldn't even see their faces. Although for me, that's not hard. <laughs> My eyes aren't the greatest. But I was like, wow, wow. And we said last week, there's such a, a grieving taking place in here because all of us, me included, were going through things last week and, and that, that's not going to go away quickly. It shouldn't, right? If, if, you, if your car got damaged or wrecked and you got rid of it and got a new one, you, you, you might say, well, oh, there were things about that car I liked, but in about three seconds, you forget all about your old car because you got a new one. But when you lose a loved one, it's not a possession or an object. And, and working through that loss takes months, and then you only accomplish a part of it. Because ultimately, you cannot be fully healed and restored until the judge comes. Because part of what happens is the devil's accusing us the whole time, and he's, he's assigning death to us. You're not worthy of life. He, he can't give you life. You, you just live a few decades here, and then you're gone, and there's nothing more to it, and they close that lid, and that's it. It's the end of, and see, he just cut, keeps uh, accusing us. Of, of not having life, not having eternal life. And again and again, you think it's just some figure of speech that Ju Jesus uses, but this is why over and over he says, I have come to give you eternal life. I came to give you life. All who love me become those who have life, life, life. As many as God loved. Hallelujah. For all, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we might have what? Eternal life, life life, life. And until the judge comes, we cannot be fully, fully, fully aware of life and what that means. So there's a part of you, for all of you who have lost a loved one in the last couple of years, or maybe in, in your lifetime you've lost loved ones, and there's still some, something in there, a twinge of, 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 of doubt, frustration, loss, hurt, that's there because it's life. It's not a car or a truck life here's the final thing look at verse 26 I love this one but then the court will pass judgment <laughs> the judge is coming but it's the whole court that passes judgment don't you forget that I'm not the king but I'm going to be in his court amen then the court will pass judgment and all his power will be taken away and completely destroyed. He's here for a year, a year's and a half a year, or what they say, three and a half years. Three and a half years. And we walked around for the last 40, just cringing and worrying. Well, maybe the Antichrist is already alive and well on planet Earth. Maybe this is it. This, is, this could be, well, not today, but probably tomorrow. This is going to be it. And it's only three and a half years. And the Bible says, at that point, the court's going to pass judgment and say, that's it. Not another drop of power. Thank you, Sister Amy. Praise God. Then the sovereignty 
power and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be given to the holy glory to God, given to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will last forevermore and all rulers will serve and obey Him. Hallelujah. Do you know why every ruler will serve and obey him? Because that's you and you and you. It's not going to be the kings and presidents that are there now. They don't get to do this for all eternity. You become the kings and the rulers. You will always and forever serve and obey him. There will be no rebellion. Some of you have just gotten sideways theologically here the last couple of weeks as I've been emphasizing that. Every act of rebellion will be instantly judged and those people will be held accountable. There are a lot of people that think they're going to get to enjoy this world and sin all they want and then live through the, the uh, millennial kingdom and everything's just going to be great. They are going to hate the millennial kingdom and they're not going to last very long. All rulers will serve and obey him. Because when you go to the New Testament, it says he's called us, prepared us to be kings and rulers priest with him. Every, every ruler for the millennial government will be a born again, eternal son or daughter of God. Redeemed. Glorified. You have a job. Well, pastor, I was just hoping to retire. I didn't really want to have to work for a thousand years. I thought this was going to be happy today. Positive. I, what? No, 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 no. It's okay. Number three today, in the end, we will serve the king. It's impossible to see this fully at present. And that's why I want to redirect your attention here. He talks about the Antichrist. He talks about the spirit that's, that's animating him, empowering him, and the influence, the impact that he has on this world. But notice that all of that is surrounded by all of this information about the people of the Most High God. You see, there's got to be, if there's this side, there has to be the other side. And so God allows, if you want to emphasize the little horn, you want to emphasize whatever he does with that power that he has for a few minutes, and you want to worry about the mark of the beast and the, and the uh, vaccine and all, go right ahead, have at it. But I'm, I'm focusing on the rest of the chapter, the 90% of the chapter that tells us the other side. Come on. This is the good part. This is the power and the presence of the Lord. That's... Now, I agree in the beginning that Daniel, just his, the vision of this troubled him so much that he was terrified. Just the vision of it. We're worn down now, but the Lord is with us. We're worn down now, but the trial is almost over. We're worn down now, but the rewards are almost ready. Hallelujah. There is reward in store for those that love him. Amen. And those rewards are almost ready. Serving God and, and living for him is building up for you rewards. Jesus said, lay up not for yourself treasures here on earth where moth and rust and thieves are always on the work. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Come on, there's something there that you and I have put there waiting for us against that day. There's something that you and I are looking forward to. It's not just Jesus and ruling and reigning with him. Hallelujah for that. Praise God. But there is also everything that we've put there. Glory. Now, you lottery winners, I'm going to tell you how to launder some of that money. I'm not talking about here on earth. You can buy all the Bitcoin you want. But I'm going to tell you how to launder it eternally. Get it into the kingdom of God. No, you don't have to give to Central. I've got an international ministry that you can give to. Cent <laughs> there are things that we have struggled because of. Some of you have given sacrificially. Some of you have sent your kids into ministry or world missions. Some of you have made sure that your kids had a faith-based education or pulled them out of a school anywhere, including a Christian school where they were being bullied or, or, or whatever, and you've invested in them, you've paid for college, whatever it might be. But through all of that, you were trying to obey God. 
You were trying to do things that you knew God was leading you to do. Can I tell you that you may not in this life see any reward for it, but everything that God has put on you to do and that you obeyed is laid up for you and I in heaven. There is a reward that's coming for the people of God. We're not doing this in vain. We're not doing it for this life. We're not doing it for an earthly crown. We are doing it because the King, Lord Jesus Christ, has called us and we know that He is the King of glory and He's coming to His courtroom soon. I love how this, um, this plays out. Then the court will pass judgment and all his power. I don't want any of it because it's all going to be taken away and completely destroyed. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be given to the holy people. Now this is why we can get easily ensnared by the devil about the kingdoms of this world. Because we know they're coming to us sometime. So we get kind of out of balance on the time. Well, I need the kingdom right now. If we just had the kingdom, think about all the good we could do, Pastor. We could touch nations. We could rescue children. We could make a difference. You want to make a difference? Stay off heroin. I want to I wanna feel like I'm, I'm really making a, a, a powerful contribution around the world. And I want to feel, and I want to feel, and I want to feel. There's no feeling in this world. This world is passing away. We don't have anything in it. Everything that we've got has been laid up in store in the other world. Everything is there. And what we get right now is the promise. We get the confidence that loving God, it may not seem like much for a short time, a few decades at the most. I was looking at a flower today while I was walking, and the other day it was just gorgeous, a rhododendron. And today, most of those little, uh, pet, I don't know what they are, little blooms within the bloom they're all just laying on the ground oh well that's not very nice who did that you know how often the bible tells us that we're not even that we're like grass that you cut and then throw in the furnace and in this life that's true as far as how much time we have but there is a life coming there is a season coming, friends, that does not end. There is something that we have access to that is forever and ever. And Jesus says, listen, you can focus on him. You can focus on his kingdom and the power that he has. But I'm going to tell you where it comes from. I'm going to tell you how brief it's going to be. I'm going to tell you how it ends. But if you want to focus on me and my kingdom, let me tell you about the good stuff that you're going to have, that you're going to get, all the good things that are coming your way. And you're going to possess them and enjoy them forever it starts with a thousand year government and you will be ruling in every part of that government and nobody going to be telling you what to do nobody going to be taken from you you're going to be in that position all God's people said Woo, hallelujah let that start right now and he said that day will come that day when all the kingdoms under heaven will be given to the people of the most high his kingdom will last forever and all rulers will serve and obey him. <laughs> I've already started. What about you? I've already started. Yeah, I'm doing the serving part right now. I'm, I'm doing my best at the obey part, but it can be challenging. Pretty soon you're going to see me doing the ruling part. Pastor, that's, it's, it doesn't feel like this life. It, everything I see and everything I hear and everything is so limited. I, 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 I can't even imagine. I'm not even sure. It just sounds like a fairy tale. And, and all this is so real. <laughs> I just refer back all the time to that lady that was here a few years ago for the National Day of Prayer, the doctor, that every time you tell me your name, I say, I won't forget that, and I still do. And Brother Steve's getting ready to yell it out right now. But, you know, she slipped into eternity. For 30 minutes there, 25 or whatever it was, that, that's all I need for, for somebody like that, educated. She was one of the foremost back surgeons in the world. She worked at UCLA or USC or whichever one it was, and she'll be mad if she ever finds out that I called the wrong one. But she, and, and in that training, 
said, I'm telling you, where I went was more real than where I came from. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. And what you and I need to understand is this body can't inherit eternity. This body cannot inherit incorruption. And so we get a new body and then we're going to rule and reign forever. But pastor, how does that help me right now? Keep on keeping on. I don't understand what it does for me when I don't have enough money to pay my bills and everything's going up. Like I can't even believe how, how things cost now. I don't know what to do. Just keep loving Jesus because he can come to the court room at any moment, not just eternally, but in your situation, not just later, but now. He can come into the courtroom at any moment. He can slip in just for one little issue. He can come just for a few moments and say, in this situation, I rule in favor of my son or my daughter. He can bless you at that moment. He can give you favor. He can cause his tabernacle to be put up above you and no rain to fall upon you. He can make you the head and not the tail. He can bless you as you go out and come in. He can take care of every need you have. All you've got to do is stay close and connected to him. And if you're feeling worn down, join, join the saints, gang. Jesse Penn Lewis wrote a book, I think it was her, called War on the Saints. And that's what the enemy does. He's got everybody else. His war is on the saints. And if possible, he'll try to wear us down. But we're going to stick together in these last days. And we're going to keep looking for the kingdom that's coming. Amen. Come on, stand with me this morning. Stand with me. The kingdom is coming. Glory to God. The kingdom is coming. Praise God. Hang on. The kingdom is coming. You're a part of the team that wins. You're on the team that's victorious. Your name is written in the book of life. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. How many of you have struggled some reading through Chronicles, Ezra and Nehemiah with all the names? Seems like everybody's name in there but yours. I'm looking for Doug. You know, Doug. Even if it's Douglas, I don't care. And you can spell it like people do all over the world. D-U-G, D-O-G. Yeah, oh. <laughs> do you know what that's supposed to tell you and I? One of the things it's supposed to tell you and I? Somebody's keeping track of the people of God. Somebody's writing down everything you do for the kingdom of God. And that's supposed to encourage us that somebody up there in the book that counts is writing down the names, you know? Every Jedediah and Zachariah and Zachariah's son, Jedediah, and Jedediah's Jedediah, and Jedediah's Jedediah's Jedediah. You read through it and say, blah, 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 I don't even get it. It's being written down. What you do for the King of Glory is being recorded. Google wants to know what you buy. Amazon wants to know what you buy. The King of Glory doesn't care about what you're buying. He cares about what he bought. He cares about what he bought. Peter said, you are bought with a price. You are bought with a price. You are bought with a price. You who are watching me today, have you been bought with a price? Amazon will wring every drop out of you. hearts with me this morning, please. If you've never invited Jesus to be the Lord of your life, it's time. If you're away from him and you know you need to be back with him, it's time. May 30th, 2021, this is your day. This is your day of victory and salvation, your day of breakthrough and overcoming. This is your day of eternal life. This is the day that Jesus rescues you from the garbage that is this world. He didn't die to redeem this world. He died to redeem men. He'll take over this world someday. He'll certainly be king of glory. That day will come. But he died to redeem men right now.
even in this sin-darkened world, even while the clock is ticking and time is running out on Satan and his Antichrist, Jesus Christ is still saving people. He died so that we could live, went in the tomb so that we could be resurrected. Jesus Christ is King of glory and will return one day. And when He does, He'll come to the courtroom and the people of God will rejoice and the kingdom will be ours. If you've never met Jesus, invite him in right now. Come on, invite him in. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm ready. I'm ready. And I just want somebody to pray with me. I want to be sure. I want somebody to pray with me. I'm here to do that with you today, my friend. You might be his son or his daughter, but I'm here to build that bridge to introduce you to King of Glory so that as a son or a daughter you can lift up your head you can be picked up out of your rebellion and your sin and He can tell you you're a new creation now I bought you with a price you belong to me that's Jesus, He'll do that for you if you've never given your life to Him why don't you, why don't you trust me and Him today to give you that opportunity if you'd slip up your hand and say Pastor pray for me I want to give my life to Jesus just for a moment, let me see it and then take it right back down. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. I just want to pray for you. If you're here and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. God bless you. Somebody else today, Pastor, pray for me. I want to lay it all down. I want to surrender everything. I want the King of glory. I want to inherit the kingdom. I'm waiting for one more today. Say, this is my day. I'm taking advantage of this. You can go to the bar, and the bar will give you all kinds of things, but they won't give you this. You can go to the nightclub, you can go to Google, you can go to Facebook, but they won't give you this. I'm giving you access to eternal life. Anybody else today? Come on, pray with me. It's like this. You just simply say, Lord Jesus, you are everything. And I am nothing. You're alive, and I'm dying. I need rescue. Would you forgive me and save me? Save me from sin, but save me from this life. Take all of Satan's lies, diseases, and demons. Take them out of my life. And I will live for you as you give me the power. Now and always. In Jesus' name. Prayed that prayer from anywhere in the world. And you began to follow Jesus. Why don't you get in touch with us? You can email or text us from right there or message us from right there in the app. Why don't you get in touch with us and let us begin to walk with you on this journey? What you did today is begin the new life. You just began. You took the first step, but it's it's a walk. Amen. If you're here today and you need special prayer, not just for healing, but for anything, you're in a situation. Or you just want prayer, you're, you're carrying the burden of bereavement. 